Welcome to NewSoft Technologies Medical Practice Management Podcast Series. I'm Jennifer McDuffie, and today we're reviewing the top five things you need to know about meaningful use and the High Tech Act. Our featured speaker is Steve Rogers, the Director of Product Management at NewSoft, and Steve is currently leading the effort here to prepare our products for certification under High Tech. Hi, Steve. Hi, Jen. Before we get to our main topic today, which is, of course, the top five things that we need to know about high tech and meaningful use, give us a little background. For anyone who perhaps hasn't been following the news, what exactly do we mean by meaningful use? Well, let me start back at the beginning. The American Recovery and Reinvestment Act, commonly referred to as the Recovery Act, was passed in February of 2009. That was an overall stimulus package that included a portion for high tech. And the High Tech Act, in fact, is Health Information Technology. So the High Tech Act was part of the overall ARRA Recovery Act from February 2009. Out of that, there was $20 billion earmarked in programs for deployment of electronic health records. This includes incentive payments from both Medicare and Medicaid through CMS, the Centers for Medicare and Medicaid Services. Uh, in order to get those payments, an eligible professional has to demonstrate meaningful use of a certified EHR system. And we're going to talk about that in, in more detail as we go through this today. Uh, the final rule was posted on July 13th of this year and was just published in the Federal Register on July 28th. So now it is part of the public record. This was a lot of information that, yeah. that was published by the government with the final rule on, on July 13th. For those of us who maybe didn't read the, the entire thing, give us the cliff notes. What are the top five things that all medical practices are going to want to take away with this rule? Jen, I think the number one thing is understanding the eligibility requirements. There are differences between the Medicare and Medicaid programs, and we're going to talk about those just a little bit. For Medicare, let's focus on that first. First, you have to be defined in the Social Security Act as a physician that provides Medicare. That covers osteopaths, dental surgeons, dental medicine, podiatrists, optometrists, and chiropractors. For Medicaid, that list of physicians is expanded to also cover nurse practitioners, certified nurse midwives, dentists, and physician's assistants that are working in either a FQHC or a rural health clinic environment. So the basic definition to begin with is that definition, which is eligible professional. Uh, once you get beyond that, then you've got restrictions on what percentage of your practice is Medicaid patients or how much Medicare Part B claims you're, you're filing in a given year. For Medicaid, you have to have 30% of your caseload be Medicaid patients, unless you're a pediatrician, and they specifically identified that as only requiring 20% of your caseload to be Medicaid. But in general, 30% of your caseload has to be Medicaid patients to qualify for Medicaid. So there are eligibility differences between the two programs, and there are some caseload qualification differences. Uh, what about differences in the payout structure between the Medicare and Medicaid programs? That's a good point, Jen, and, and that also plays into how much time you have to get the right EHR solution into your practice. For Medicare, there's a maximum payment over five years of $44,000, and that's if you start using uh, a certified EHR in a meaningful way in either 2011 or 2012, and that's a, that's a point that some people didn't quite understand. There's not a rush to implement it immediately. You actually can start it during 2012 and still qualify for the maximum payment of $44,000 over the five-year period. For Medicaid, the uh, maximum payment is $63,750, and that is over six years. For Medicaid, you can actually start using a certified EHR in a meaningful way all the way up as late as 2016 and still qualify for the maximum payment. So there's quite a bit of difference. For the, for the estimated 20% of eligible professionals who will qualify for the Medicaid program, there's quite a difference between what the payouts are and when they can start. And these amounts are per provider, not per practice, correct? That's right. That's a key differential. This is per eligible professional. So there are instances where an eligible professional may be working two or three different practices based on the workload that they're doing. Your eligibility is based on how much that individual does in a meaningful way, not how much a, a certain practice does. And there's one more point on when to uh, get started with your EHR that I'd like to make. For Medicare, it's key to understand that during your first payment year, you are required to meet meaningful use through the use of a certified EHR system for 90 days. That's 90 continuous days at any point during your first payment year. In subsequent payment years for Medicare, you are required to meet the uh, meaningful use requirements for the entire calendar year. 
For Medicaid, during your first payment year, it is only essential to adopt, implement, or utilize a certified EHR system. It's not required to meet meaningful use for any period of time during the first payment year for Medicaid. So that's a very key difference between it. Essentially, for Medicaid, December 31st, 2011, you could implement a certified EHR system and qualify for a payment for calendar year 2011. What if I don't implement an EHR? Well, Jen, there are going to be penalties for not adopting a certified EHR. This applies only to the Medicare, only the eligible professionals that are dealing with Medicare. Starting in 2015, there will be a 1% reduction in Medicare fees per year for those who have not implemented a certified EHR and are not using that certified EHR to meet meaningful use. So that would be 1% reduction in 2015 2% reduction in 2016, and then a 3% reduction in 2017. Those have already been identified uh, in the public record. Starting in 2018, it could increase to 3 to 5%, and uh, right now the maximum is is 5% reduction. You know, as you look at it, the 5% reduction in your fee schedule is not something that uh, most eligible professionals would be looking to accept. So Mm -hmm. the move to uh, utilize a certified EHR in a meaningful way definitely is something you want to consider before 2015. And this is, of course, as it stands right now, there is the potential that the laws could change, correct? Yes, absolutely. Talk about some of the criteria that an eligible professional will have to meet to get the money. Well, that, and that plays into how, the, how things might change over time. The current definitions are based on what's being referred to as stage one. There's going to be right now a stage one, a stage two, and a stage three. The stage one criteria is what's already published in the, in the uh, Federal Register. Stage two expected to be out for comments by the end of 2010. The uh, intentions right now are that stage two will not be put into place until calendar year 2013. For 2011 and 2012, the stage one criteria is what it will hold. One of the key differences that came out between the initial final rule and the final final rule is the uh, objectives that have to be met to qualify for meaningful use. There are 25 objectives that have been established. Earlier this year, all 25 objectives would have to be met by an eligible professional to qualify. With the final rule, that was actually adjusted, and now there's a core set of objectives, which are 15 items, some of which have been, in fact, modified themselves over that period of time. And then what's being referred to as a menu set of objectives, and those objectives total 10, and an eligible professional will be required to qualify based on five of those items. And that would include at least one public health objective that's included out of that menu set of objectives. Finally, eligible professionals can't just use any EHR, can they? There are parameters around the types of systems that they're going to have to buy. Can you talk a little bit about that? Yes, Jen. The certification program is still a little bit up in the air. There's a temporary certification program that has been put in place, although the details of exactly where you go to test and who exactly is going to do the testing and point-by-point details on what that testing will include have not been identified. One of the points that that I get asked quite often is, well, what about CCHIT? That's the Certification Commission for Health Information Technology, which has been uh, something that EHR vendors have utilized for certification purposes uh, beginning earlier in 2007-2008. At this point, there are no certified EHR vendors. So anyone who has CCHIT certification, there's no grandfathering. There's not a transition plan that says if an EHR was CCHIT certified that it's now going to be certified EHR technology under the new CMS rules. So that's a very key point. And, And again, there's a a temporary testing program in place right now with a permanent certification program that won't begin until 2012. But at this point, the final details on that certification program have not been established and there are no certified EHR vendors in the market today. That testing will commence in the fourth quarter of 2010 and continue into 2011. Great, that's very helpful. So to recap, give us the five points again, one sentence each this time. Okay, let's walk back through. Point number one, eligibility requirements are different between Medicaid and Medicare programs. Point number two, you still have time to find the right EHR solution. Payments don't start until 2011 or 2012. Number three, there are going to be penalties for not adopting certified EHR technology for those eligible professionals using the Medicare program. Point number four, meaningful use requirements will be rolled out in stages. We're currently in stage one. 
And number five, the vendor certification process for certified EHR technology has not been finalized, and therefore there are no certified EHR technology vendors today. Thanks, Steve. And for people who are still looking for additional detail about meaningful use, you can visit the NUSOFT website at www.newsoft.com and just click on the red ARRA button, which is on the homepage. page.